There are three stage response I think we need to take to counter extremism, to counter terrorism. And they all come back to some of the stories that Amara faced. <coughs> One, we need to counter the teaching of the shortcut to heaven. The teachers, the preachers, the priests, the religious people who say there is a shortcut to heaven by taking other people's lives are wrong. There is nothing in any religious text that justifies the killing of children. There is nothing in any religious text that justifies the murdering of innocent people. So one thing we must all do together is counter that narrative that's wrong. That's hard. It's a multi-generational process of education, which is linked with the second thing. We need to remove the incentive for people to end their life on earth early. You're only going to be inspired to blow yourself up if life on earth isn't, in your mind, worth living today. And if you believe in God and you believe in heaven and you're enjoying your life today, you can wait 60 years to see God. And then when your life reaches its natural course and you die, you go to heaven. Why short circuit it? Why go there quicker? Live your life, honour your belief and then go to heaven if that's what you believe. But you need to make life worth living. And now comes a really big challenge. If people feel life is not worth living because they feel poor or dispossessed or disempowered, then how do we counter that? By giving people comparative wealth, worth and empowerment in their lives. That's a big challenge. It's a challenge in the northern suburbs of Paris. It's a, northern, uh, it's a challenge in the western suburbs of Belgium. It's a challenge in some areas of Melbourne. It's an enormous challenge in Afghanistan and Iraq and some places of Pakistan. Where life, as many of you know, is so miserable that if you could be given a short cut to heaven, who wouldn't take it? But that's a real challenge. And then add on to that the increased incentive that comes if you've just seen some of your family killed because of a drone strike. And that's an ongoing challenge because now we get to the third thing that links to the second. Even while we're doing an education program to show the error in people believing there's a shortcut to heaven, and even while we do work to increase the economic empowerment of people across the world, we still need to have an incredibly strong security apparatus to respond to people that might want to blow themselves up. We do need a security opera uh, apparatus to stop them. But what happens when that security apparatus <laughs> is in tension with encouraging other people to become suicide bombers? The collateral damage. There is a legitimate question to say, if I can strike a terrorist who's about to kill 100 people and I kill five or 10 innocent people in killing that terrorist, there is a legitimate argument to say, but in killing five or 10 innocent people, have I just inspired more terrorism? Maybe, maybe not. And this is a very hard decision that many of the people in charge of weaponry have to make. Is this so-called high value target high enough value to risk collateral damage, but risk the inspiration of other people being motivated into terrorism. Because I know one thing, if my friends were killed in front of me, I would want to respond to the people who killed those people. And that's a natural consequence. And it's a dilemma where all three of these things interrelate to each other. A strong education system to counter the negative narrative a strong economic development mechanism to be able to make lives worth living for people and a strong counter security involvement to stop people who have actually decided to undertake an act of terrorism. They are the lessons I take 